Hi everyone, this is Cheryl from My Well-Rounded Life, and welcome to my next exciting episode of Try It, You'll Like It. This time today I'm making some red wine braised short ribs. I've had the short ribs in my freezer for a while, and uh, as you know, or you might know if you watch my weight loss Wednesday videos, I'm trying to use up all the food in the house, so... The short ribs are next. I got a recipe from Epicurious.com if you're interested in uh, this exact recipe. Um, I like to make, now I can't remember what they are, beef shanks, braised beef shanks. And they are, in a lot of ways, made the same way that this is. I was just going to use that recipe, but I thought I would Google braised short ribs and this recipe came up so I'm gonna follow it now I I dried my meat and I have some olive oil in my pan and we have to brown both sides I had to turn it down a little because I was already smoking a little too much well you're supposed to brown all sides and do it in batches. So I'm going to do this in two batches. Hold on. I don't want to make a mess all over the kitchen. I got this little splatter guard from the Dollar Tree. I'll be back with you after I've browned all the meat and taken it out of the pan. All right. I took all the... Uh, the meat out after I browned all sides and then it said to drain most of the fat and add your carrots and onions I have they were two kind of small onions and big chunks and I'm cheating and using baby carrots because that's just what I need to do today I'm gonna break up these onions Get everything coated in that oil, that fat from the meat. And I'm reading my notes here for a second. I'm supposed to brown this for five minutes and then add some flour and tomato paste. All right. Break these onions up. Mmm. Boy, I love onions. I'm using the tomato paste from the Dollar Tree. Those, uh, it's a box of, I think, six little packets. And there's two tablespoons in each pouch, so they're perfect. I'm gonna let this brown for a bit and I'll be right back. All right. These onions have browned and softened nicely. And it says to add some tomato paste and flour. I'm only adding half of this because it says one tablespoon and a couple tablespoons of all-purpose flour and give it a stir. It's kind of gross looking. All right, add the flour and tomato paste and cook this for two to three minutes. While well, that's cooking, we'll talk about the spices. It says to add parsley, thyme, oregano, rosemary, and bay leaf. I don't have thyme or rosemary because I threw it away when I was packing to uh, move here because they were grossly out of date. And then I just never made another list of spices after I moved in. So slowly, since I moved in, as, as I see that I need a spice, I've been adding it to my store list. So this week I'll add thyme and rosemary. I'm not a big rosemary fan, so I may not even add that. And for the holidays when I cook, I usually buy the fresh herbs. And of course this recipe wants you to use the fresh herbs. The only fresh herb I'm gonna be using is some parsley in the very end, just to, you know, garnish. I wanna bang this on the top, but every time I do it makes my dogs bark and then I get angry. So I'm trying to remember not to 
pound that out. They think someone's knocking on the door. All right. Now I have to stir in the wine and add the ribs and the juices. Well, there's no ribs, there's no juices to the ribs, but I do have half a cup of wine here. I bought this red wine. Uh, can you see it? Now, I don't know. Here's the red wine I bought. It's a little on the strong side for me. I prefer white, white wine, but you know, this is a red wine braised short ribs recipe. This will help me braise the pan, which there's, there was some black on the bottom of the pan when I took the short ribs out, but I don't see any now. Ooh, get a whiff of that. Stir this around. You're supposed to, um, oh, see, I did it. Go all the way around. All right, let's add the meat back. Go lay down. Let's mix this up. Now the next step is to bring it to a boil and simmer to reduce the wine 25 minutes. So that's going to take a little bit and I'll be back when it's done. All right, we're pretty much uh, down to not much liquid. This is what I discovered while I was waiting for this to simmer. I looked up the recipe online because every time I cook with wine, it's always half a cup. But it was it was um, reducing to nothing in, in a matter of minutes. So the original recipe wanted me to use an entire bottle of wine. No, I don't want that much alcohol in my food. So I put another half a cup in to equal a full cup of wine and then I added like half a can of beef broth to give it enough liquid so that it could simmer and reduce for a while. It's reduced down lovely. It looks nice. It's very thick because of the flour that we put in there. So I'm just gonna move on from here. It's only been like 20 minutes. I have to add the herbs and the garlic and then the beef broth. So I'm gonna add some Parsley, that's a waste of time. Let's just add some parsley. It's probably a good tablespoon. I don't have a lot of oregano left. I think I have a new one now. But you gotta watch it with um, dried parsley. It's a lot more potent than fresh. So that was a teaspoon. And then a couple bay leaves. And don't forget to fish these leaves out. Is that better? Nope. Okay. Uh, the bay leaves, fish them out when your product is done. They wanted four cups of beef broth, so I was just measuring the cans to see exactly how much it was. And I'm just using, right now, two cans total. I have another can on reserve if I feel like I need it. Oh, and one clove of garlic. I use the Supreme Tradition from the Dollar Tree, and I'm not a huge garlic fan. So, one of these little teaspoon fools will be enough for me. And we'll give this a mix. And I'm supposed to bring it up to a boil see. Add the herbs, the garlic, and the beef broth. Bring it up to a boil and then cover it and put it in the oven. 350 degrees, which it's already set at and ready to go. And uh, then it's supposed to bake for two to two and a half hours. I'm going to check it in two hours to see how it's doing. They said if the, if the bone slides right out of the meat, then you know that it's done. So come on, boil. I'm going to be making mashed potatoes for this, and the carrots will be the main vegetable, but my mother's coming, so I think I'll make some green beans as well, because she likes green beans. And she's not supposed to eat mashed potatoes. Of course, anybody trying to lose weight isn't supposed to eat mashed potatoes, right? But I'm going to eat mashed potatoes. I'm going to put a couple pieces of these 
beef tips on top of my mashed potatoes and all is going to be right with the world. It smells absolutely wonderful. All right, it's just about ready to boil and I'll be back with you as soon as I pull this out of the oven in two to two and a half hours from now. Hi everybody, this is Gracie Wu and she's getting a bubble bath. We just finished soaping her up and now we're gonna rinse. This is the first time she's getting a bath in the new apartment and I must say I hate this double sink because it's hard to get her to fit in it. The last place had a nice big sink but it didn't have a spray hose. So I had to use cups. And uh, so this place, the sink is too small, but it has a spray hose, which will help rinse her a lot faster. She was doing a little grumbling earlier, probably cursing me out, but I can't help it because you were starting to stink, baby. At least she just stands there and takes it. She's a good girl. But we had two hours to wait for those uh, beef tips to bake in the oven, or rather braise, and all we had to do was make mashed potatoes, which we'll do next. So I thought, what a better time for a bubble bath. Right, Gracie Lou? See you later. Come in. I got her to straddle the middle of the sink, so now there's actually room. I just thought I'd let you know. Here's Gracie Lou, all nice and clean. In her face, look at her face, I just love it so much. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. Here, have a snack. Have a snack. Have a snack. There you go. Uh-oh, here comes the other one. If you come in here, you're getting a bubble bath, too. Oh, good girl. See you All later. Right, everyone. It's exactly two hours since I put it in the oven, and this puppy is done. I checked it really quick to make sure it didn't need more time, and uh, the bone just comes right off from the meat. So that's great. What I'm supposed to do now is remove the meat carefully from the pot. And then I have to strain the juice because if there's any fat on the top surface of the juice, you wanna get rid of that. This is also a good time to fish out your bay leaves. I just found one. I have eight small pieces of meat. Two pieces of serving should be great. All right. This looks fantastic. It is so thick and there's some there's some uh, bones just floating around in here because they just fell apart. I'll bring you over and show you. Or not, where is it? Can you see that? It'll be easier if I do this. Look at this meat. It looks fantastic. All right, I'm gonna be back as soon as I strain the vegetables out of here and degrease any of the sauce. All right, everybody, it's done. And I have some homemade mashed potatoes here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple pieces of this meat on my plate. It looks fantastic. Carrots and onions, they look like they cooked up really nice. I hope they're nice and tender. I want some more onion here. Mm. And this sauce turned out really nice. I didn't even have to remove any fat from the top because there just wasn't any. Take a look. Look at that. Doesn't that look sublime? Mm. Then we'll finish it off with a little sprinkling of fresh parsley and we're going to give it a taste. Let's see. Wow, it's really hot. Mmm. Wow. I really hope you give this a try and if you do, please let me know what you think about it. This is fantastic. That sauce, the red wine sauce, is absolutely delicious. This is right up my alley. Until I talk to you again, be blessed.